political activist, feminist, poet, and the very first Indian woman to preside over the Indian National Congress and be named as Governor of the Indian State, often referred as the Indian Nightingale. Ladies and gentlemen, we present you to Rojini Naidu. Miss Naidu had no conservative youth. She was a scholar and had an intercaste marriage with the approval of her father. This was back in the late 19th century. Unlike other women, she did not want marriage to interfere with her ambition at the time. Madam Sarojini was a Gorina Chatrapati's eldest daughter, a Bengali man who was the principal of Nizam's college, Hyderabad. At the age of 12, she studied at the University of Madras, graduated from King's College in London in, in 1898, and later studied in Girton College, Cambridge. Among eight siblings, she was the oldest. Her brother was a nationalist, Harindranath Chattapadhyay. Another brother, Harindranath, was an author, dramatist, and performer. The family in Hyderabad was well regarded, not only for heading the Hyderabad Nizam College, but also as the most famous artist of Hyderabad at the time. As soon as she had completed her education, she was drawn to India's Congress movement and Mahatma Gandhi's non-cooperation movement. Following some participation of the suffragist campaign in England in 1924 in the interest of Indians, she traveled to East Africa and South Africa the following year. She became the first Indian woman president of the National Congress, followed by the English feminist Annie eight years earlier. In the aftermath of partition of Bengal in 1905, Naidu joined the Indian independence movement. She soon met other leaders such as Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Rabindranath Tagore, Mahatma Gandhi and was inspired to work to achieve independence from colonial rule and social justice. Madam Naidu travels to numerous regions in India between 1915 and 1918 giving lectures on social justice, women emancipation and nationalism. In 1917 she also helped found the Women's Indian Association. When Naidu went to London as part of the All India Home Rule League in 1919, as part of her continuing, uh, continuing attempts to campaign for independence from British control. She joined the Gandhi Satyagraha movement on her return to India in 1920. Madam Naidu was influential in the movement for women's rights in India. In 1917, she helped with Annie Besant and others in forming the Indian Women Association. The organization demanded equal rights for civil rights and representation. She addressed the need to bring more women into Congress and fight for the equality. British and Indian feminists like Madam Naidu founded a journal named Sri Dharma in 1918 to present world news from a feminist man. As a highly educated woman who was actively involved in the politics of the Congress party, Madam Naidu was a national symbol of women emancipation, especially when taking into account the fact that it is historical consensus that Madam Naidu was extremely popular among the political leaders and commoners alike due to her charisma and contagious love for her country. Madam Naidu's skill and the ability itself presented a convincing argument for the benefit of allowing women to access high levels of education and to hold office. Not only did she talk about women getting educated, she also emphasized about the struggles widows go through and also emphasized about how they should be accepted into the world if they get remarried. Madam Sarojini was a huge believer in diversity. As a matter of fact, Madam Sarojini bet Paripati Govinda Raja Naidu, a scientist. She married him at the age of 19 after she completed her studies. Intercaste marriages at the time were not as common as they are today, but they were approved by both communities. Since Sarojini came from Bengal, while Padipati came, Naidu came from Andhra Pradesh, it was an interregional marriage as well between the East and South India, with two distinct cultures. As followed by many, Madam Sarojini also believed that this caste system was just a social hierarchy used by many communities to show their superiority. Therefore, Madam Sarojini diminished the thought of having a caste system within her family and had even had an inter-caste marriage. This great leader and freedom fighter not only wrote beautiful poems, she also found her way into the Indian politics, where she was a member of the Indian National Congress. She became a member of the Royal Literary Society in London. She became the president of the INC. Sir Naidu also actively took part in the civil disobedience movement, the Satyagraha movement, and the Quit India movement. She was also sent to jail several times. This shows her bravery. Lastly, India got independence in 1947 and Sarojini Naidu was made the gover governor of Uttar Pradesh state. 
She was the first Indian woman to become the president of the Indian National Congress. She was also the first Indian woman to become governor of any state in India. Unfortunately, Saroji Naidu passed away on 2nd March 1949. She's left, a, she's left a great name for herself in the history of India. My name is Rohan Malyala and this is Saroji Naidu. Thank you for watching.